Hey folks, it's Dr. Gersmar from Aspire Natural Health. This week I want to talk about an interesting topic that uh, keeps crossing my radar. Essentially, it's medical marijuana and it's the use of marijuana for leaky gut. Could medical marijuana be used to help treat leaky gut? Short answer is maybe. Now I have to admit, I'm someone who's come to marijuana and medical marijuana very reluctantly, right? It so happened that when I grew up, I was a nerd. I know, shocking, guess that, right? I wasn't in the popular crowd, the jock crowd, I was in the nerd crowd. When everybody else was out, you know, dating and, and doing fun stuff, my friends and I were playing Dungeons and Dragons, right? So I was someone who never had any exposure to marijuana, really much of anything else. In fact, I really didn't even have a drink of alcohol until I was 25. Just something that just never interested me. So when I started hearing a number of years ago about medical marijuana, I was just someone who kind of rolled my eyes at that, right? Picturing the stoner who goes in complaining about their back pain or their, make, you know, their made up glaucoma, that they really needed a prescription for marijuana, right? I'm here to say I was wrong, right? Marijuana is certainly can be used recreationally, can be, it is an intoxicating substance, right? I've come to see on a study of marijuana, though, that if you drink alcohol, right, you really, in my opinion, you have no leg to stand on when it comes to criti criticizing other people for using marijuana recreationally. When we compare the two substances, we set aside all dogma, everything else, and we just put the substances side by side and look at them, alcohol and marijuana. The reality is, and this was surprising to me, marijuana comes out clear in a way of better choice than alcohol. So we would probably be in a better situation if we flipped the table and outlawed alcohol and made marijuana easy and legal and you could get it anywhere and everywhere. We would probably have less problems from that, okay? This is not to say that like alcohol, marijuana cannot be abused, that it's completely and utterly safe in every single situation and has no side effects. I mean, that's just silly, right? But the reality is marijuana is a safer substance than alcohol. And the reality of why it's banned and alcohol is legal has more to do with politics than with any amount of science. So medical marijuana, right? The use of marijuana, not recreationally, but to treat medical conditions, right? When it first became available here in Washington state, I said, I want absolutely nothing to do with that, right? Again, I don't want to see the stoners come in, you know, begging for scripts for marijuana, right? Uh, when I have real people that I need to treat. That's an ignorant viewpoint, right? Were there some medical marijuana mills that did that? Yeah. Am I supremely glad that recreational marijuana is now legal in Washington state so anyone who wants to get it recreationally can just go buy it and they don't have to clog the medical system trying to get, you know, uh, phony, uh, you know, recommendations to get marijuana just so they can get it? I am super glad, right? I am of a belief that people should be educated about what they're putting into their bodies and they should be allowed to eat, you know, eat or consume right, whatever they want. I'm not a fan of banning junk food or soda like some people say, but I am a fan of, of putting you know, the right safeguards in place and, and doing the right thing. But banning something, it just never works. Okay, So when it comes to medical marijuana, and this, this, this vlog here is not about medical marijuana in general, but I kind of wanted to share where I came from, which was a place of complete ignorance as far as medical marijuana goes. And I want to say, you know, all the data that's out there from clinicians that are using it regularly to the data that we have available says it's, it is an incredibly helpful herb. Now, as someone who uses herbs, I have to say one of my pet peeves is when, you know, people are using code words like herb for marijuana. Like herbs, there are many, there are thousands, tens of thousands of herbs, and herb is just a plant with medicinal properties, right? So peppermint is an herb, right? It has medicinal properties, is helpful. Of course, people are using code words because marijuana is legal, but marijuana is an herb. It's a powerful one, right? It's been a plant that we've bred over what seems to be millennia to emphasize its medicinal properties. So it is a powerful medicinal herb. It's useful in things like nausea, right? Especially with chemotherapy. It's useful for when people have no appetite, again, often with chemotherapy, other wasting diseases. But I've seen people before that just, be, for a variety of reasons, have no appetite, 
right? And they're suffering pretty mightily from that. Um, and marijuana can be helpful. Well, the place that I've come, so I've reluctantly been pulled into the use of medical marijuana for my patients. Again, I had no interest in doing it originally, but the thing that really struck me was pain management, right? We have an epidemic, an absolute epidemic of opiate prescription abuse. And again, we just said, look, marijuana, when you stack, take stigma aside for a minute and you stack marijuana and alcohol next to each other, marijuana comes out the clear, better choice. And we can do that again, except it's even worse. We can stack the prescription opioid medications like oxycodone on one side, and we can stack marijuana on the other. Now, this isn't to say that it always in all situations that you should use marijuana instead of pain medications. But I am here to say in many instances, you would be much better off using marijuana instead of using the opioid pain medications, right? Marijuana is not physically addictive. Some debate about psychologically addictive. Opiate pain medications can absolutely be physically addictive, can lead to death, right? Unless you try super hard, you're going to basically you know, choke to death on marijuana. Um, it, 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 they are not near in any way, shape, or form nearly as dangerous, right? So for me, working with some people who have chronic pain, seeing the negative effects of opioid medications, I have been steering more people to the use of medical marijuana for the treatment of their pain, finding that not only does it help with the treatment of their pain, it also helps with their mental state, anxiety, and other issues that are feeding into that chronic pain, right? So I've become a reluctant advocate of medical marijuana because the data is pretty overwhelming and the clinical data, like what people are seeing out there, is pretty overwhelming. Now, you might have heard a little bit about epilepsy. We're not going to delve into that. What we're talking about today is leaky gut, okay? So I was turned on to this. I saw something, then did a little bit of research, so I'm going to share a couple of research studies. There is nothing absolutely, you know, 100% uh, proven here, but we have some tantalizing studies that say that some of the active components in marijuana, and there are many, many of them, right? The two biggest components you'll hear about are called THC, as in, uh, oh, I just got to think, you know, tetrahydrocharlie, right? And CBD, carrot, boy, dog, okay? THC and CBD. Now, THC is the intoxicating part of marijuana, Recreational strains of marijuana are typically bred to, you know, emphasize THC, just like in liquor, right? Many liquors, the, the, the proof, the amount of alcohol is jacked up, right? So when people drink that beverage, they notice the intoxicating effects of alcohol. Well, they've done the same, right? Recreationally, people take marijuana for the intoxicating effects. So the THC content has been bred upwards to make marijuana stronger. Now, the second compound, CBD, is completely non-intoxicating, right? You could, you know, the, you could take the oil of CBD, drink the entire thing. You're not going to have intoxicating effects like you have with THC. So the interesting thing is that the medicinal brands of marijuana typically have a much more balanced ratio of THC to CBD in them. And so you're getting multiple medicinal effects. But the CBD is actually an anti-high. So it tamps down some of the intoxicating effects of THC. So some of the, the real commercial recreational strains have very high levels of THC and very low levels of CBD, meaning from a medicinal standpoint, they're much less helpful. Right. So what about THC and CBD and leaky gut? Well, some studies here indicate CBD is very anti-inflammatory. And THC also seems to have some anti-inflammatory properties. We know leaky gut often comes about because of inflammation in the guts. There can be a whole slew of reasons why that happens, but it's there because of inflammation. And some preliminary studies we have show that those compounds and a few others in marijuana as well, by exerting anti-inflammatory effects, see, do reduce intestinal permeability. So could marijuana be a useful tool in treating intestinal permeability? The answer is preliminary data says yes. Now, if you were going to use marijuana to treat leaky gut, how would you go about doing that? 
Well, certainly, again, this isn't a license to just say, hey, look, I smoke marijuana all the time. I'm treating my leaky gut. Like, let's be real about this, right? If you want to smoke it for recreational means, you don't have to justify yourself to me. Just like if you want to drink, you don't have to justify yourself to me, okay? If we're instead trying to really treat leaky gut with this, use it as an actual medicine for a specific end here, then my opinion is an edible form as opposed to a smoked or vaporized form is definitely going to be a better option for you. So whether that's an oil, like the, where the marijuana has been infused into an oil, or whether it's a, you know, a little pellet or a little candy or something that's going to put the medicinal compounds directly in touch with the, uh, the intestinal tract, I think there's a very reasonable case that could be made to try this. Now, of course, it's important. I just have to put a little bit of disclaimer here. Depending on what you're using and your particular sensibilities, you may find that a little bit of marijuana impacts you profoundly, or you may find that it doesn't. So as always, recommend be safe if you're going to try this. I'll preferably have someone else around just to kind of keep an eye on you. Don't plan on driving any heavy machinery, any bulldozers or tanks or cranes or anything like that. In all seriousness, you know, don't go out and drive until you've had a sense of how this is going to affect you. Because just like alcohol, you can certainly become intoxicated, right? And the specific dose that you're going to need, you know, may or may not affect you significantly. I would be a big fan if I were considering trying this. I would get an infused, probably an infused oil, right? You can do that at home or you can find it at the medicinal, you know, the, the medical marijuana dispensaries, right? The medicinaries. Um, and I would start, start small and dose yourself with, a, you know, again, depending on the product, but with a few drops, um, again, as part of an anti-inflammatory regimen, and just kind of keep an eye on how this affects you. Now, I'm in particular thinking of this for patients who not only have leaky gut and gut disorders, but also have anxiety because, again, for most people, marijuana can be incredibly helpful for dealing with anxiety. So we kind of get a twofer in the sense that we get some of this anti-inflammation in the gut, we get some a reduction in the leaky gut, and we get some help for their anxiety as well. So could medical marijuana be a good tool to use in leaky gut? Absolutely, it could be. If you think it's the right choice for you, have someone help you out, be sensible and responsible about it, okay? And feel free to drop us a line. This is something I'm considering experimenting with for some of my patients who are open to this type of therapy and seeing what type of results we get, especially for people who are of a more anxious disposition uh, it, it, it seems like it could be incredibly potent. The other side of it, of course, is please, you need to find out what is driving the intestinal permeability in the first place. So it's great to bring in an anti-inflammatory, again, whether that's something like curcumin or frankincense, also called Boswellia, or whether it's marijuana, right? Bringing in an anti-inflammatory is incredibly helpful. But if we don't treat the root cause, what's driving that inflammation in the first place, then at best, we're using a natural Band-Aid to just, to just treat the, the symptoms, the dysfunction of what's going on. All right. I hope this has been helpful for you guys. If you'd like to get in touch with us, it's www.aspirenaturalhealth.com, aspirenaturalhealth.com, or facebook.com slash aspirenaturalhealth. I'll have the references to the studies that I posted. We'll put them below so you guys can see them. If we can help you, please contact us. We specialize in autoimmune diseases, gut dysfunctions, and hard-to-treat cases. We don't give up on our patients, and we are always, always looking to learn more, which is how this whole medical marijuana came into my radar in the first place. Until next time, guys, take care.